My name is Nils, and I'm here to tell you a bit about Train Tracks, our real-time behavioral analytics tool for mobile games. But before I get started, I'd like to make a controversial claim. Namely, there is no such thing as data-driven design today. Let me explain. So, to give you guys a bit of background, I'd like to start off by telling you about our company, Mention. So for the last couple of years, we have been trying to merge the fields of behavioral psychology, game theory, and memetics to create a better predictive model of human behavior. And that has allowed us to work with some really interesting companies like Sina and who amazing research and work with game developers. And I think that's where we really found our calling, decoding the game. You see, there's something really human about how we play games, and we wanted to study that, but we kept running into a wall. There's something wrong with analytics today. We needed a new kind of tool, and it turned out that our clients would be happy to have it too. So, what's wrong with analytics? Well, three things. First of all, people don't know what they're doing. It's difficult to know which questions to ask, and if you're not asking the right questions, you're never going to get the right answers. Second, companies only track what is easy to track because it is difficult to interrogate the data. The result is a focus on vanity metrics that tell you very little about player behavior. So these kinds of tools can tell you about your funnel, but not why your game is fun. And finally, there's the issue of cost. It is expensive to ask questions about behavior. Several departments need to collaborate to answer a question, and a single question can take hours what days to answer. The cost per question today can exceed thousands of dollars. And all this brings me back to my original claim. Remember, there is no such thing as data-driven design today. Now, I know that sounds crazy because a lot of people talk about data-driven design. But if you actually look at the workflow of this data-driven design, you find that there are way too many steps between someone asking a question and actually gaining insight. So there's no such thing as data-driven design today because the designer is treated like a second-class citizen. The knowledge, technology, and cost barriers effectively prevent the game designers from utilizing the data in their workflow. The problem is, working with data today is incredibly difficult. It takes several experts with their own special skills to even get started asking questions about behavior. So, what's our model? Well, we're proposing that the game designer gets to swim in the data used to train tracks, discover patterns on his own, generate hypotheses that he can then try out in train tracks without ever having to interface with the analytics department. And I'd like to give you a quick demo of that. I hope we have the sound on. So this is an early alpha, and for this demo, we wanted to try to answer four questions. Who played during a specific period? Who spent the most time? Who was the most active? And what did our public customer actually do? So let's see how our algorithm is answering those questions. Can we have the sound, please? Can you see change the time period in a particular section I want? But for now, I'm happy looking at what happened last week. Now, I can easily find out who spent the most time and who was the most active. Turns out it's a very slicey block of those items. And if we drill into this player block, we can get a quick overview of what he was up to during that time. You'll notice that the player block is displayed in plain English, allowing the game designer to really understand the play by play. So, what did Slicey buy? Well, the first thing he bought was the rusty shotgun after about seven minutes. Now, I'm interested in finding out if he actually used it, so I expand my search to include all events that are attacked with combat. I now see that Slicey used the shotgun as soon as he bought it, but that even though he won, he decided to play another practice round. And although he went back to the revolver for a while for comparison, it's clear that Slicey enjoys the shotgun. The next item Slicey buys is a rifle, but this time something different happens. Slicey loses his first game with the rifle and decides to stick with the pistol for the rest of that session. That's all the time we have to demo today, but I hope you notice how easy train tracks is to use. That looks great, Ryan. I had to keep the demo very short because we only have a little bit of time, so I want to take about a minute to talk about how we're making this possible. You notice this is real time, and we're going to keep this real
your time, even for really, really big data. And we're doing that with our state-of-the-art stack that is built on Scala, Spark, and Cassandra. And if you don't know what those things are, don't worry. What it means is that we can keep this real time. The immediate response allows you to follow your train of thought. And we think this is going to be huge. It's scalable, meaning no customer is too big, and we can grow with our clients. It's fault tolerant, meaning no corrupted data, and our service will not go down. It's maintainable, meaning lower costs, lower maintenance, higher margins for us, and it's incredibly reliable. We are the safest and most performant place to store your data, all thanks to a stack that is up to 100 times faster than the technology that our most advanced competitors are using. So, to understand the market that we're in, we first have to take a look at the game industry, which is just hit 72 billion and it continues to grow at roughly 10% per year. Correspondingly, the business analytics industry. 38 billion, but the business analytics industry has very low saturation in the game development vertical because they've only just started adopting these kinds of tools. So there is no such thing as data driven design today, but with your help, we're hoping to change that, introducing a market, uh, introducing a tool to the market that is up to 100 times faster than the competition. We hope that gets you excited. Thank you. So these are my founder co-founders, Jeff and Ryan. Can I have a quick hand for them as well? Um, can you talk about the target game type? Are you targeting MMO games, web games, you know, advanced casual games? What what are the most ideal um, environment for your data? That's one and two. If you can introduce the uh, team's background uh, in terms of you know, where where you guys are doing as well as maybe give a little bit more about whether your system has been stress tested with any particular games. Right. So I'm going to start from the middle and start with quickly introducing our team. So I'm Nils. I'm one of the founders. Before I was at Mention, I was the international channel manager at a ERP company where we work with business analytics. Uh, this here is my co-founder, Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan. One more thing about Ryan, he uh, was a game design teacher for five years. Hi, my name is Jeff. Um, I used to work at Apple. I worked on the A4 chip at Apple instead of iPad and iPhone. Um, I used to work at Microsoft Research, and I previously I was working on lots of the crumbling platforms in China. So, what kind of games is our product made for? Well, we're targeting mobile games initially, and the kind of games that we're good with are event-driven architectures. So if the game developers are already tracking data, we can help them out at very low cost. It doesn't really matter to us if they're an MMO or a social game or whatever. That doesn't really matter for us. What matters is that they're tracking their events. Has it been stress tested? Not yet. We're still building this. This is an early alpha, but we're developing this in close collaboration with the Berkeley Amp Lab. In fact, they just offered us some free office space uh, in the Valley. So we're hoping, hoping to hop over quite soon and stress test this with them. But they are very ambitious about this project, and they keep assuring us that when they tested this on their own, not with our product, but uh, the staff versus Hadoop, that it performs up to 100 times faster. And we are some of the first people uh, on the market to use this technology. What's the unfair advantage? We have a couple of unfair advantages. First of all, we've been running a consultancy for the last three years where we do behavioral engineering and engagement design. We really understand why people do the things they do. And we are building the analytics tool around those practices. So for the last couple of years, we've been uh, consulting for companies like Sina and game developers, teaching them why people do the things that they do. And we found out that the, the, the data tools that they had just weren't good for answering the kinds of questions that they need to be asked. That was the first problem, right? People don't know what they should be asking. So we feel that is an unfair advantage. Having Ryan is a fantastic unfair advantage. Working with this kind of, of big data, um, I, there is no word I can use that is better than Gene. Right. He was the first person to bring genetic algorithms into the cloud. If you're techie people, you understand what an achievement that is. And other unfair advantages is we are very well respected in the game development uh, community. Uh, we have been writing a lot about uh, game design and behavior, and we are already thought leaders on why games work the way they do. So we think that our product will be welcomed with open arms by the game industry. 
Do you have a ticket to uh, to the game developers? Yes. And uh, do they have to indicate any code on their server? Yeah. Yeah. They don't need to implement anything on the server. It would be on the client. So, um, and we integrate with uh, several different game engines initially. And we want to roll that out to as many as possible. So right now we have an API that can be called from any game engine. But we want to tightly integrate it to make the developer experience as good as possible. So do you store the data on your server? Yes, all the data is stored on the server. So the game developer go to your website to log in to check their data performance. But they can also check on tablets and phones, so we're completely mobile friendly um, with um, our application.